to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of masculine spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. And soup up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now, here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm very happy to have a very uh, powerful and special guest and friend on our show today. I'm going to let you know who that is in a few moments. Uh, but I wanted to re remind you, uh, uh, the, the, the time in the church history when around the year 350 or so AD, the whole Catholic Church woke up and found itself in heresy, the Arian heresy. Uh, most of the bishops, so many of the bishops have been kicked out of their bishoprics and had been replaced by Arian bishops. And it seemed like the whole church was collapsing. Athanasius, St. Athanasius, had been, sent, had been exiled into the desert uh, and uh, had the great, the great uh, champion of uh, orthodoxy uh, was driven out of his bishopric. And bishop after bishop was replaced in, a, in, in, in moments of great political intrigue as the Arians who denied the divinity of Christ took over the Catholic Church. In fact, at one of the church councils, uh, St. Nicholas uh, became, as we say, the bad St. Nicholas. He punched out uh, one of the other uh, people that were there that were uh, defending the Arian heresy. It is said, legend says that he took a swing at him and was, and was, and was removed from the council for a period of time. Things were in a very, very... Um, it seemed like the whole church was about to, to cave in on itself. It was, it, was, it was not attack from the outside. It was attack from within. There were wolves in sheep's clothing. And yet the Holy Spirit, who's bigger, who's the biggest and baddest dude on the block, the Holy Spirit uh, planted a fire of his love in the hearts of the people, and Catholic orthodoxy was restored. The bishops were restored. So we need to have a time. We need to have great courage, and great hope, and actually, not be downcast, but look up and know that God is doing something powerful and something great. He is restoring His church during this season, and we have as our guest a friend of mine, a cast member of Long Ride Home. You've seen him in season one, and soon he'll be. Uh, he's part of season two, which will be coming out soon. Our motorcycle reality show. And a friend who's been there for me since I was, uh, when I was going through a really tough time in my life, he, he stood by me, and he even gave me uh, a copy of a, a, a Traveler's Catholic Catechism. It's a super light catechism, which I cherish. I kiss it every time I pick it up. Uh, uh, I use it every morning in my Ocean Sunrise catechisms that I do around the, wherever I am in the world at 7 a.m. that time. I, I spend 15 minutes teaching out of the catechism. We're almost through the whole book, by the way. It's, we're on our third year now. But this is a man that I have utmost confidence in, in his, uh, his love for the church, his love for the Pope, his love for the people of God, his love for the, the positive uh, faith, his love for the magisterium of his church, his love for Jesus, and I know his love for me. Father Mark Goring, thank you for being on the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Good to be with you, Bear. So you have a YouTube channel, and it's called what? It's just my name, Father Mark Goring. Father Mark Goring. And so uh, we'll have to share this with you, so maybe you can share it with your people. But also, if you want to see this, you know, we're on the EWTN radio network. We're on every sort of podcast app there is. We're on Sirius FM. Uh, but we're also on the YouTube channel, too. So uh, if you want to, you can go to our YouTube channel and share that video with your friends. This is a video you're going to want to share. And by all means, subscribe to our channel and subscribe to Father Mark Goring's channel. Father Mark, it's been really interesting to, to uh, in the last several months, your YouTube videos have been just so um, powerful, uh, humble, um, pursuit of truth. Bishop Noonan told me the other day that, um, uh, you know, people are so into truth, uh, so into justice and mercy these days, but they've neglected truth. And without truth, all of that goes awry. Uh, what do you feel about what's happening um, what, what's, what's your heart telling you? What's the Lord speaking to you right now about work, what's going on in the church? Yeah, I mean, my, my big concern, among others, is uh, I don't want to see the church in the U.S. get to the place 
where the church in Western Europe has 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 become, uh, or or Ireland or Quebec. Um, we know that the church in the U.S. is in decline, obviously in big part because of the scandal in the church, and um, I just. I just feel that now is not the time to just stand back and watch. It's the time for faithful Catholics to fight for um, for our church, you know, for the church in America. And, you know, you're a pastor. You really are a pastor. You're watching out for your flock, and you're, I'm not necessarily part of your flock, but I know you're watching out for me. What are the, what are the, the things that, what is it that, at some point, you had to say enough is enough. You know, one of the things you can, uh, when I was at the Napa Institute meeting in Washington, D.C., and Cardinal, Cardinal Mueller was there, and Scott Hahn, and Dr. Tim Gray, and so many wonderful people, one of them stood up and said, there's, <clears throat> there's really something wrong with people who don't, at some point, know when to be angry. So there's a sort of an anger that we can have that's a, a, that turns into determination, when did that point come when you were ready to, when you began to say, I need to speak out? What was it? What is it that's on your heart right now? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, for me, I, I, I've never been a person who's had actually much interest in church politics. You know, I just, I just always assumed, you know, the leaders of the church, they're, they're, they're doing their job the best they can. And um, I'm, I'm just going to focus on, on my particular, you know, uh, flock and, um, uh, but then I read Dr. Ralph Martin's letter where he kind of spelled out what he saw was going on in the church. And it, it shocked me. Like I, I thought to myself, this, this can't be true. And then a little while after Viganos, uh, Archbishop Viganos testimonies came out. And, and I think for me, that was when I just, it became clear and obvious to me, okay, there's a battle going on, and I need to become one of the soldiers who who, who fights this battle. Um, it, it just, again, it was just plain clear to me that um, there's a corruption network in the church. Um, some of the hierarchy is compromised. Some of the hierarchy is just cowardly. Um, and some of the hierarchy is 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 corrupt, you know. And I just it became clear to me if we don't fight this, the church will will be decimated. You know, uh, getting right to the heart of the issue, uh, Bishop Strickland's address at the bishops' conference. Uh, he was the one that brought up uh, uh, is it I forget the gentleman's name Sul, Sula, the Sullins. yeah Sullins. Uh, Study and Dr. Janet Smith at the Napa Institute in uh, D.C. We had that one-day event in October about the church crisis. Uh, it, you know, the big, the big uh, elephant in the room is the the statistic that says that now half, eighteen uh, percent of the the priests in America are homosexual, and uh, the bigger and, and another big statistic, and I don't remember the exact, is how many of our priests are no are not being true to their celibate vows. Um, and so that that's the big elephant in the room when we talk about predatory priests. Uh, it, it appears that most of the issues related to predatory predatory uh, priests uh, with minors has been handled to a great degree by the Dallas Protocol, but the the predatoriness of, among young people, uh, you know, eighteen and above, and then just the acting out of, of the the two priests in Miami that were caught last month uh, having sex. Uh, at a parking lot near the beach. It, that seems to be the heart of the issue is this whole area of, uh, of the, as they've called it, the homosexual mafia or whatever you want to say. What, how do we deal with that? What, is, what, what do you say to that? It's yeah, very... well, 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 like you said, the, the, the Sullins report um, you know, highlighted that it seems like in the, in the 60s, the seminaries started taking in homosexuals. And um, and that caused the percentage of homosexuals in the priesthood to keep going up and up to the point where now, according to Solomon, or I think it was around 10 years ago, if my memory serves me correctly, it had made its way up to 18% of the priests um, are homosexual. Um, and and that, that 
may have gone up since then because we know that the the, the church has, you know, um, again in some places has really opened the door to this. And what what's what's what I think most shocking about the Sullins report is that he he says uh, Father Sullins, the sociologist, he says that if I hope I'm wording right, but there's a, a direct correlation between the, the, the percentage of homosexuals in the priesthood and the rate of abuse. And he, again, if my memory serves me correctly, he says something along the lines of the, the correlation is almost perfect. Perfect. We're talking so, with Father Mark Goring. He's the pastor of the Catholic Charismatic Center in Houston. He's a member of Long Ride Home. Uh, his YouTube channel is uh, Father Mark Goring. And you can go there and listen to more of his YouTubes. We'll be right back. We're going to get more into the, the grittiness of this. This is Bear with the Bear Wozniak Adventure. You can go to our website, deepadventure.com, and find out more. And if you want to watch this video and share this video with your friends, you can go to the Bear Wozniak YouTube channel. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We're so thankful for our sponsors, uh, the Solidarity uh, Healthcare and uh, Notre Dame Federal Credit Union. We want to give a shout out to Brad, Brad Hahn at uh, Solidarity and our good friend Thomas Gripe, CEO of Notre Dame Federal Credit Union. Thank you for your supporting this show. We feel it has a vital impact on uh, uh, reaching people and evangelizing people. We're talking with my friend, Father Mark Goring, uh, about re the, what's going on in the church right now, the recent Solon report. I guess the statistics have been, Father, that eighty percent, eighty-six percent, I think, is the number of the abuse cases are is 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 homosexual in nature. And now you and you've been referencing the Solon report and the direct correlation between the the increase in homosexual priests and the increase of predatory behavior. Speak to us more about that, please. Yeah, I mean, I think what what Solon's mentioned, if my memory serves me correctly, he said, had we not started taking in homosexuals into the seminary and, and priesthood like the church did back in the 60s, there would have been 85% less abuse cases. Now that's that's massive, you know. And again, he, he just says it's, it's the correlation. The, the, as the number of homosexuals or the percentage of homosexuals rise in the priesthood, there's a direct correlation to the the number of abuses. And I, I'm sure it's very, I don't know what, you know, embarrassing, hurtful for, for, for some people to hear that. But if that's, as you were saying at the beginning of the show, if that's the truth, that's the truth, you know. Another thing that's interesting, Bear, is you see the Catholic Church teaches that as, as, as disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, we're called to be pure. Mm. You know, we're called to, to guard our hearts. We're called to chastity. We're called to to integrate, uh, allow the Lord to, to, to integrate our sexuality so we become more and more virtuous. And I think in a particular way, you know, if the Catholic Church has rejected what the Lord Jesus has, has commanded us, should we not be surprised that when the storm comes, uh, the house will be destroyed? You know, um, there is no reason for the church to uh, water down the teaching of the Lord Jesus. We're called to be holy. We're called to be pure. We're called to be virtuous and chaste. And until the church uh, embraces this, it's going to be a mess, you know, and you know there's currents in the church right now, or rather in the world, that the spirit of the age right now is so perverse. And this perversity in the world wants to creep in to the Catholic Church. And unfortunately, again, there are corrupt, there are compromised, and there are cowardly leaders in the church who who are willing to open the door to... Uh, to the spirit of the age, you know, and so that's that's the battle we're in right now. We need faithful Catholics uh, to say, no, not not in my church. You know, this is 
This is the church that Jesus established. The teachings of the church are clear. And also the warnings from the Lord. If we don't build on the rock of God's word, um, we're done, you know. And so, uh, so yes, we, we need to, to kind of address the obvious problem in the clergy, which is homosexuality. Okay, okay so let's, let's go here. Let's start at the very root. Um, where I, I see it, you talked about the need for purity. I have friends that are Catholic that re, uh, uh, approach the Eucharist and receive the Eucharist that have been uh, divorced and living and now living with someone for a decade with, with no sense at all that, that's, that receiving the Eucharist in an adulterate state uh, in, in the, during a time of adultery like that, we would clearly call it that adultery, is wrong. There's many people listening right now that are living with someone that they're not married to, and yet they call themselves Catholic. There are many people that, uh, why are there so many? I love these big Catholic families, by the way. But someone's contracepting because a lot of the Catholic families, you know, are one or two children. Uh, Someone, people are living together outside of marriage. They're contracepting. Uh, They're not, there there are many Catholics that are, that are proposed, uh, that are pro-abortion. And, uh, and so we kind of get the leaders we deserve in a way, right? It's kind of, uh, uh, I think Jefferson might have said that. We get the leadership we deserve. So we need to start by taking the, the, uh, the log out of our own eye. But, but I was talking to a friend of mine. I go, can you talk about that with, with me on camera? He said, yeah. Jesus said, don't take the, um, the little uh, sliver out of sliver. your friend's eye. Take the log out of your own. But that's not what Jesus said. He said, take the log out of your own eye so that you can take the slitter, sliver out of your friend's eye. We as the Catholic Church, the leaders that we have is largely because of us. And I remember Rick Santorum, when he spoke at the Nap Institute two years ago, he said, the reason why we're in the state we are right now is, is your fault. He pointed at the room and said, it's your fault because you were asleep at the watch. Uh, but what do you what do you see? What What is your, uh, your word to... Uh, to Catholics right now, what what should our response be? Yeah, well, I mean, one of the scriptures that come to mind is where you know the Lord Jesus says, "Why it is the road that leads to destruction?" Uh, you know, most most take that road, uh, but but hard narrow is is the the way, the gate that leads to life, and few find it. You know, and I, I think every Catholic has to. Just make a decision that they are going to uh, follow the gospel without compromise and follow the church's teaching without compromise. And that is going to be a battle. <laughs> you know, like It is not easy to live the gospel without compromise or even try to live the gospel without compromise. And I you know, I think in the in the Catholic Church, we in, in a lot of our institutions, we we've kind of allowed compromise. We, we've the culture has become one of oh well, you know, we're not, no one's perfect, so you know uh, we don't have to kind of follow the the gospel so wholeheartedly. And and you know, the olden you know, we always talk about the olden days, you know, but. Um, you, you think about the the desert fathers mm-hmm. and how intent they were on on achieving purity of heart, mm-hmm. you know. And even the you know the monastic tradition, there was such a focus on virtue, on holiness, on you know sacrifice. And in so many places, we've lost that. You know, we we've just lost our sense of of becoming holy, you know, of, 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 uh, uncompromised following of the Lord. Are we, in, are, are we in danger of salvation father? When are we, are we falling into the heresy of sola fide? Are we being presumptive on God's mercy? Well, I'll tell you something. I mean, no one, no one knows exactly the numbers on what, what percentage of people, you know, get to heaven and purgatory and hell. But when the Lord was asked, you know, will many be saved? His response was th- uh, strive, you know, strive to enter uh, through the narrow gate. Um, and so, I mean, I think that 
for a person to compromise the gospel and the teachings of the church uh, is is um, is extremely dangerous for their eternal salvation. You know, every one of us as, as Catholics, we need to meditate on hell on a regular basis. We need to meditate on eternity on a regular basis, not with a servile fear, um, mm-hmm. but, but with a with a, just an honest reality check that, hey, my life is real short. I could die today, and I'll have to give an account for my life. And, and God's Word is, 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 is clear and... Um, yeah, and, and yeah, the I, Holy Spirit. I, I was just with uh, Bishop, is it Molinari? I forget how to pronounce his name. He, he, he was with us in D.C., and he, and, and he spoke boldly and strongly. He passed away, I think, on November 24th. Vig- Morlino. Uh, yeah, Morlino, right. And um, Vigano, uh, if, I forget that, if that's how you pronounce his name, Vigano, has been saying, I had to say this. I had to come out for the sake of my soul. You talked about a need to ca- to meditate on our death, the monks of the desert, they may not have had but maybe one a book of Psalms or maybe a gospel to meditate on, but they most all had a skull in their cave. Their words to each other when they would see each other very rarely, their only words they would speak is, memore morta, remember your death. And we need to realize, um, and when we get back, we're, gonna, we're, not, we're challenging people, but when we come back from this break, I want to encourage people how they can break away from their own double life if they themselves have found themselves living not according to the gospel. We're talking with Father Mark Goring. I'm going to strongly urge each of you to go to his YouTube channel. It's Father Mark Goring YouTube channel, correct, Father? That's right. And please subscribe and click the little bell so you get you get uh, uh, notified every time that his new show comes on. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We'll be right back with more. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm with my friend, Father Mark Goring. I was recently got to talk with Bishop Noonan, my, my bishop here in, in Orlando, and uh, we had a conversation with him about political correctness and, and all this sort of thing that's the, the kind of turning upside down of, of morality in the world today. And he said something I thought was so profound. He said, people want to pursue justice. We see these so-called justice warriors, and they want to pursue mercy. Uh, but without truth, all of that is uh, is turned upside down, and it's mis- everything is misapplied. The thing about the Catholic Church, and if you read the the, the Catechism, uh, we can form our consciences, and we know how to behave. We know what God is calling us. It's not just behavior. We know what God is calling us to. Father Mark Goring is with us uh, going into the break. He said, we, we want to love the Lord and serve the Lord and obey the Lord, not out of a servile, mercenary sort of, if I do this, I get to heaven. We want to love God back. But God said the way you love me back is by keeping my commandments uh, because the, his commandments are really his will and God's will is love. But Catholics have fallen, Father, I think into a sola fide, you know, by faith alone sort of mentality that once they've given their life to the Lord, no matter what sin they're falling into, they have a ticket, a, a, a ticket to ride, a free ticket to heaven. Uh, but I want you to talk right now, the guy riding in his truck, uh, the person uh, listening to this, uh, maybe sitting next to someone who they're they're in an adulterous relationship with, or maybe they're and what I mean by that is maybe they're in a committed relationship but they're not married. Uh, what is the path back if we're going to be challenging our priests to celibacy? Uh, what what is the path back for our own people who are living a double life in some way? How do you? What's your prescription for them? Yeah, well, I mean, obviously, each one of us needs to. Um have an encounter with with the Lord Jesus. Uh, it's kind of like the the example they always give is first the Lord G- the Lord God set the people free from Egypt, then He gave them the law. So I mean I think anyone who's who's struggling with a life of sin, you can't do it on your own. You you know your own willpower just won't get you there. You need the grace of the Holy Spirit. You need the grace of God. Um, and, uh, and so, 
you, you know, to, to turn to the Lord Jesus, to acknowledge your sin, to repent, and to just beg him to, to help you um, is, is obviously the first step. Um, I mean, each obviously each individual case is, is, is unique. Uh, one of the things I kind of really insist with people is try to get into God's Word on a daily basis. I just, like for me, reading Scripture, it just, it, it puts a fire in my heart. Yeah. You know, when, when we read Scripture with love, it's God's Word and it's alive and active, you know. And I just find reading God's Word, first of all, it, it, it tells us the truth. And I just, I think that there's not only something that we learn when we read God's Word, but there's a power we receive to, to, to live it. Um, you know, uh, obviously going to confession is extremely powerful if someone's living a life of sin. You know, I mean, we're all, we all struggle with sin, but, you know, in particular, if someone's struggling with, with something that they can't get out of, to, to go to confession, confession makes a person new. It, it, it cleans the soul and, and um, just gives powerful grace. The other thing, too, that's really big is just, just you know, having Christian friends, you know, uh, like I'm part of a, a little men's group, and the, 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 the strength I get from, you know, sharing the struggle, the journey with other men who want to be holy is just powerful stuff. And so, yeah, so it's a battle, you know, it's, it's a... Uh, it, it, it it requires we need the grace and yeah, we need it we need to go you know if here's the thing um cowardly men there there are a lot of couples living together where the man is the coward he's the one that won't pull the trigger and say let's get married and the woman is there giving her so much of her to him and it's time for him to kind of man up but you're right uh, we need to go to confession we need to go to our pastor, our priest, and say, how do I move from where I am now to where I need to be? We need a men's group. Father, that's why we have our Bears Man Cave. You know, we have the Man Cave where men can join, uh, and uh, it's a private Facebook group, but they go to our website, deepadventure.com, to join. And then we share with each other there in that secret Facebook group. And about every two weeks, we have a Zoom video chat where we all get together and we talk, and we go through my most recent book on the virtues. But I'm, we, we need to challenge men to be to manly virtue. But the key to it, you're right, is the sacraments, adoration, confession, meditating on God's Word. I was thinking about this last night as I was meditating on, on God's Word, the life of St. Paul. Think about when he left Damascus. He was lowered out of the, the wall. You know, the Romans had a special honor for the first man over the wall when they were laying siege to a city. He was the first one lowered out of a wall, you know, in the kingdom of Jesus. And he fled to the desert, as you said, the monks of the desert. For three years, he lived in a cave, probably, maybe the same one Elijah was in down in that area, reading probably from the scrolls he had written as a youth when he was charged with copying the, the scrolls, probably the Septuagint. His heart must have been burning so much. Oh, my gosh. And this means this, and that means that. He was connecting all of the dots. And uh, for three years, I feel bad for any no bad that came by his cave, you know, because he's going to let. And then he goes back to Damascus, and he, he's so, I'm sorry, so on fire there that, that he just, he, he, he causes uh, real problems. And he goes to Jerusalem. He can only spend two weeks there because he's so on fire. Your word to say, in fact, the, the, your, your ministry, I think when you go to YouTube channel, the, there's a name for it. Become Fire. Become, Become fire. fire. Night Lives. And that's it. If you're meditating on God's Word, if you're going to confession, receiving the sacraments, you'll have the boldness and the courage to take the steps God's asking you to take. Amen. Amen, yes. So t take us more along this path now within the church itself. Where do you see the uh, the challenges are, and how do we how do we as a, as the laity uh, yeah. pursue uh, pursue bringing the church back to where it needs to be? Yeah, like for me, what's critical is that faithful Catholics push back. You know, um, I think that in the past, uh, faithful Catholics wouldn't dare challenge the leadership of the church. You know, uh, but that that didn't work in Western Europe, it didn't work in, in Ireland and, and Quebec. 
uh, I, I mean, I, we always obviously have to be respectful of our leaders, uh, but that doesn't mean letting them get away with awful stuff, you know. And um, I, I just think it's it's so important for uh, faithful Catholics to to make it known that we're not going to tolerate nonsense. And if if leaders in the church think that they can get away with nonsense, we need faithful Catholics to make it very clear to those leaders that uh, that's not going to happen. It's it's my church too, and. Um, we need to we need to fight. You know, I, I, I've been quoting Peter Kreeft. He says, "Love." I love him. <laughs> love fights. You know, and if if we don't uh, deal with the you know the, the corruption in the church right now, um, we'll see the church continue to decline, which will mean the loss of this, the salvation of souls. You know. Um, you know, the other thing too, Barry, that I, th- I think is 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 interesting is, I believe this is a time of grace for for Catholics. I think that Catholics who do answer the call to fight for the honor of Holy Mother Church, those Catholics will receive tremendous grace in their lives. It's like they'll they'll. There'll be, oh, I don't know what you want to call it, a, a, a new springtime in their faith. You know, the Lord, he's not outdone in generosity. And I, I think sometimes it's it's in the times where we lay it on the line, where we, where we um, you know, pour out uh, all we have that the great graces come into our life. So this might be the time where saints are made. Just because people did have the courage to say, you know what, I'm not going to be a lukewarm Catholic anymore. Um, I'm going to fight, and I'm, I'm willing. I mean, and I've, I've said openly, I'm willing to die, you know, for the honor of the church. I mean, life is short. We only get we only get one shot at life. Eternity is long. And I think we just need Catholics who are willing to say, you know, I'm not worried about my whatever, my, my security, my comfort, my reputation. I love the Lord Jesus Christ. I love the church he established. I'm concerned about the salvation of souls. And so I'm going to, to to fight, you know, for the honor of the church. And if I die, I die. And I think, you know, now when I lead people to the Lord, I think I'm leading this person perhaps to martyrdom. But we have to, it's a reality check. I mean, we, we think, oh, no, that could never happen here. But it happened uh, in, in communism. It happened in Germany. Uh, we, it's, you know, the, the French Revolution, uh, the revolution in, in, in England uh, when so many Catholics were martyred, and it'll, it can happen again. Uh, we're talking with Father Mark Goring, who's giving us a, a message of hope, of courage, but and also of truth. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We'll be right back. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want to invite you to uh, go to our website, deepadventure.com, and you'll see there that we're taking a tour, a pilgrimage, I should say, to to Greece this year. We're going to be going to all the places, so many of the places that Paul went, uh, from Athens to Thessalonica, um, all through that area to Corinth, uh, by by beautiful buses, uh, the tour company that we use, is just uh, incredible. I've used them before. And then we're going to take a cruise across <clears throat> to Ephesus, the great church there that Paul worked with and that that uh, John was with. And tradition says perhaps Mary was there. And then we're going to go to the island of Patmos and Mykonos and Santorini. And we want you to come because there's nothing, there's two, there's three places in the world I really want, I've, I really feel are important to go to. The Holy Lands, Rome, and the, and the paths of, of Paul. Because Paul... Um, Really, uh, we know more about Paul than we know about any of the other apostles, and we can really live and breathe uh, the progress of his of his uh, his uh, journey. So, we want to invite you to please go to deepadventure.com and join us there. Uh, we're talking with Father Mark Mark Goring. He's a cast member of Long Ride Home. He's the pastor of the Catholic Charismatic Center in Houston, Texas. Father, when I came to your church uh, two years ago, when we were filming Long Ride Home, and uh, you know, it's about the toughest thing anybody can do is to be on the set of Long Ride Home. 
It's super mm-hmm. challenging. And uh, we went. In, I went into your 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 church, and uh, and as mass was beginning to start, the infusion of the Holy Spirit just filled my soul like I hadn't experienced in years. At the moment that Father Francis said, "In the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit," it's not something you can make up. It's not something you can force. You can only make yourself open to the move of the Holy Spirit. You can just present yourself to the Lord. But it was such a a moment of of God encouraging me that in spite of my, I always look at all my weaknesses and inabilities and rough edges, and the Lord just said, just, I'm going to be with you. I'm going to be with you. And I think during this time uh, of the church, uh, when God is challenging us to step into the breach, he's not looking for perfect people. He's looking for willing people. And there's nothing more powerful than changing the church. Um, Archbishop Chaput spoke to us uh, at the Napa Institute. He said, then, then having a family, having lots of kids, and raising them in the Lord. It is the domestic church. It is one, it, when you look at the walls of Nehemiah, when, when, when the prophet challenged them to, to rebuild the walls, it was one man in his family that repaired this breach, one man in his family that repaired this breach, all around the whole wall. And then as they come under more and more attack, because they were more, being more and more successful, then as one man worked, another man stood with his spear and his shield protecting him. And anyone carrying supplies carried the supplies in one arm and a sword out in the other. Men need to come together. We need to stand with each other and challenge each other. It's time for us to step into the breach. Now, we're talking about the crisis in the church right now. Uh, practical things that people can do right now is, you know, we need to figure out what a good bishop is and what a bad bishop is, frankly. How would you define... A good bishop. Yeah, well, uh, obviously, you know, the bishops who inspire us to be holy, to love the Lord Jesus, to, uh, you know, become saints, that, that, that's a real good sign. Bishops who are preaching the gospel without compromise. Um, you know, I, I think the bishops who give any indication of kind of embracing the spirit of the age, um, you know, need to be uh, just, you know, we need to discern that. It's like, what are we, what are we dealing with here? Um, Any bishop that isn't transparent about what's happening with their priests that have uh, crossed the line, you know, if there's transparency there instead of political cleverness, trying to hide behind things. Yeah. I I think to another big one is just, you know, does the bishop have the, the honesty to acknowledge the the reality of what has scourged the church, which has been very much the the homosexuality in the clergy. I take that as an indication that a bishop has backbone. You know, mm. um, I think so many of us we're just we're just sick of the political correctness. We're sick of the the sugar coating. We're um, you know we're sick of being treated or, or insulted you know with with assuming that we don't know what's going on like we know what's going on in the church everyone knows what's going on in the church so don't pretend this isn't largely a homosexuality problem you know and um yeah I mean, we if, if a bishop to me that's a bit of an indication if a bishop isn't willing to drop the h-bomb Mm. I, I just feel he's he, he's a coward. You know, he, either he's a coward or he's compromised himself or he's part of the corruption. Well, here's, what, here's what I see, Father. It's like you, you talk about the H-bomb, and I think you're referencing to getting real about the, homosex, the homosexual uh, kind of a, basically invasion among our, our clergy. Um, there's going to come a time when the church says we're not going to— uh, well, Pope Benedict had given instructions, no more men with same-sex attraction in the seminaries. There's going to come a time when the church is going to have to say priests need to re-say their vows of celibacy or something like that. And if you're homosexual, you need to leave the priesthood. And uh, no more homosexual or men with same-sex attraction going to seminary. When that happens, I fully expect us to lose our nonprofit status. And we need to be willing to do that. It could mean the bankruptcy of the church, but better that than moral bankruptcy. We're talking about a, a reality check here. Yeah. What might also happen, Bear, is that the, the, the Catholic Church might give the world an indication of reality. 
the world will see that we opened the doors to homosexuals beginning in the 60s to the clergy, and it devastated our church. The correlation, again, between the percentage of homosexuals and abuse is, is they say, almost perfectly direct. Um, and other worldly organizations might see what happened to us, and they might say, hey, wait a minute, maybe the Boy Scouts shouldn't be opening the doors to homosexuals. Maybe a Catholic school shouldn't just, you know, have homosexual teachers without kind of discerning this. And it's a delicate thing, Bear, because, you know, to me, a person who struggles with same-sex attraction, a person who calls himself a homosexual in the world, who's never heard the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, like, I don't condemn those people. They need to hear about Jesus. And Jesus makes new. Like, Jesus said, I did not come to condemn the world, but I came to save the world, you know? And so we don't want to give the impression that the Catholic Catholics hate people who see themselves as homosexual. But we do want to make it clear that as, as, as disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ who have been taught morality from the Lord Jesus, who, who understand the natural law, we've learned. We've learned that the, man is made to, for, for union with woman. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, the, 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 the body isn't designed for homosexual uh, actions. And again, it might be that the Catholic Church warns the world about opening wow. the doors to homosexuality, you know. You uh, and again, Barry, you understand how this is a delicate thing. We're not throwing rocks at the, 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 the person who calls himself a homosexual, who's never really heard the gospel and who's just struggling. We love those people. We, we, we care about those people. We don't condemn those people, but we want those people to know freedom in Christ, new life in Christ. I got to tell you, when I'm around someone who, is homo who calls himself homosexual, I have such a, a tremendous feeling of mercy flowing out of my heart towards them, just because I know their life has not been easy. <laughs> You know, I, I have such a tremendous flow of, of love and mercy for them. But um, it's, it's wrong to say that the, the, best, the best path to happiness for them, which God calls us all to pursue, is to learn to have freedom from that same-sex attraction. More than that, to have healing. Because yeah. there's something in there that's broken, usually. And yeah. to seek healing and not, and not to feel like um, you're, you're alone. That you can, go to, uh, you can go to counseling, you can go to a priest, who isn't who doesn't have same sex attraction, and seek healing. So we 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 have have great love for people that are kind of trapped in that lifestyle, but we don't identify people based on their, but based on their home their their sexual uh, proclivities. We we identify them because they're made in the image of God. Father, can you wrap us up? We got twenty seconds of prayer. Can you pray for the people that are there that need to make a new step? Lord. Lord Jesus, you are good and merciful. We give you our whole lives once again, Jesus. Come into our hearts and make us new. Fill us with your spirit and give us a joy and peace that only you can give. In the name of Jesus, amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Viva I, Cristo Rey. <laughs> Viva Cristo Rey. I love this man so much. Father, you meant so much to me when I was going through a real, the hardest time in my life, and you were there with me, and you, you mean so much to me. You rode with us on Long Ride Home. You gave me my Catholic catechism, my traveler's Catholic catechism, which you can't get. It's almost impossible to get. So I'd like to invite everybody, go to Father Mark Goring uh, YouTube channel and subscribe and press the little bell so that you're notified whenever, whenever he, he has his, his morning five-minute talks. And, and go to our website, deepadventure.com. It's a great time to buy some cool, cool things for your family on our website for Christmas. Thank you, Father Mark. Thank you, Bear. Should we always say it? Viva! Cristo que viva, Rey. Que viva. Rey. Que viva. Then, que vive. And then what do you say after that? Well, I guess the standard one is Viva Cristo Rey, and the response is typically Que Viva. And then about Mary. Uh, viva la Virgen de Guadalupe, or Viva Maria, la, uh, Viva, uh, I guess, so, Viva la Iglesia Católica. Well, I'm holding, up the, I'm holding up the rosary right now for those of you guys. So is Father Mark for those of you watching us on YouTube. Pray the rosary. Mm -hmm. We'll talk to you guys next week. Aloha. Aloha. You've been listening to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Go to bearwozniak.com to get your free audio and other exciting content. 
Plus, you could pick up the Long Ride Home 10 episode DVD set, autographed copies of Bears books, Long Ride Home shirts, tanks, coffee cups, and even motorcycle pins and patches. And find out how guys can sign up for Bears Man Cave online Facebook group, all at bearwasnick.com. <laughs>